the last broadcast of 2022 on Turfs Up Radio with Frank and Jackie and The Deep End. And we are so excited that we are finishing up a 2022 and coming into the hope and the expectation of 2023. Yeah, 2022 is a crazy year. It was, you know what? It was, as Charles Dickens would say, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Yes. Was, there were some fabulous, fabulous yes. moments in 2022. And there were some huge, we, really high peaks and really low and valleys. There were some that we were in the valley. <laughs> so, Hello. Yeah. yeah. But it's okay. It's okay. Because um, here we are with high expectation when the ball drops tonight. Going into 2023, what are your hopes? What are your dreams? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean balls drop tonight? Ball. Oh, the one ball. ball. Just the one. I'm so sorry. You're the one. I'm so sorry. What do you think? <laughs> what the heck? Oh, my gosh. The ball. <laughs> is going to drop tonight in Times Square. And I wish we were going to be there. I, One, I you wish know we what? Were. One year we're going to do that. That's on our bucket list to be there. I mean, we go to New York City all the time, but I mean, to be there on. on you know how many people are there? I know. I have a panic attack just watching the show, but one day... I just want to see that. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Well, well, they can push us around in our wheelchairs. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it'll be a while. It's going to take a hot minute to do that. But anyway, we had a great Christmas week. I hope you did too. Got to see so many families. Did you just say toe? I'm sorry. You wait. talk. You make fun of the way I talk. You just said toe. I never make fun of the way you talk. No, I have a friend, the Todd, who lives in Las Vegas. The Todd. He sent me a video. Of how he thinks I talk. And this this girl was literally a hillbilly. Not that if you're a hillbilly, I love you. I love everybody. Love God, love people. I am I'm love I love everybody. But I was like, I do not talk like that. That is not how I talk. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I have an accent. You don't say words correctly. That That is your deal. You, I just don't speak different... good. <laughs> and I air quote unnecessarily. Well, in 2023, I'm just hoping that we can do like videos. Okay, all right. Because you got right, that. Your... That's my New Year's resolution. We're going to talk about New Year's resolution. Friends. I do air quote. He knows not how to use those correctly. <laughs> I'm just saying. We're brought to you. Brought to you by Poe Works. For healthy pool For people. healthy pool people. Find your local pool works for all mm-hmm. your swimming pool needs. Retail stores, service, mm-hmm. repair. Uh, some of them even do new construction. And if you don't have one near you, become one. They're Sweet. signing them up left and if right. Pool works locally owned and operated. Yep, locally so. owned and operated by small business people. But we have the support of a large group behind us. Absolutely. Franchise. Our back. Helps us compete. Yeah. Yeah. And helps us offer everything we should be able to offer. So New Year's resolutions. What you got? What are your New Year's resolutions? Well, I'm, I'm just going to not do air quotes. You're not going to do air quotes. Okay. And, and not have another stroke. Those are good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I would hope so. That's that's mine for you. Both of those, couple other, but I'm not going to say that on there. <laughs> yeah. I always do like a word of the year that I try to focus on. I know it's the witching hour and I have five of them. So, I mean, I don't know what my word's going to be. You know, we said for healthy pool people, health is one of my words of the year um, because, you know, you had a stroke last year. I struggle with autoimmune disease and so health and what can I do to do that? So I'm going to throw that one out and then the other ones, I'm going to throw them in because that's what I do. (laughs) This episode is about New Year's resolution that I'm throwing out for everyone. Oh, for their pool? Yes, and it's basically take better care of your pool and we're just going to go over things that, right. that you can do to take better care of your pool so that throws in my health but also purpose is one of my words that i'm contemplating so you have to really initiate the purpose of taking care of your pool is so that you don't have costly repair taking good care of your pool it not only saves you money it saves you time it allows you to enjoy your pool there's nothing worse than somebody coming into the store and telling us oh, i hate my pool it's just because they never had good advice they never sure. they never took care of it well Well, sometimes people can, you know, be put in bad situations, you know, that aren't their fault. But most of the time, it's just they didn't take the proper steps. We're just going to go through things that that you can do. So one is test your water or have your water tested more frequently. That's a great resolution. And and then, of course, dosing according to testing. So, But but go back. Raise your hand if you do not get your water tested every week. I know some some people live out in the sticks and you don't have a retail store nearby. You should at least test your pH. Chlorine and alkalinity need to be tested on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. 
those are quick swings. You know, they can quickly change and they need to be pet tested at least weekly. If you have a problem pull, maybe even more frequently to, you know, test them twice a week or even three times a week and then adjust accordingly. And if you don't live by somebody, you can buy a kit. Yes. Well, and, and you, 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 you need to have a kit to test those three, but at least once a month, I highly recommend that you take your water in somewhere or have a really good professional style kit that can test the other parameters and get them from your local local pool store uh, mm-hmm. they, a lot of times you know if they have a service company they have those kits sure. that their uh, service guys use you can buy them online i'm sure but the taylor 2005 okay. is a good professional kit that tests all the things that you need to test except for total dissolved solids right, right total right, dissolved right. solids is something that we use a, a mylar meter to test our total dissolved solids but if you if you'll take your water in somewhere once a month And they'll test it Uh for calcium, total dissolved solids, your borate levels if you're on borates. If you're a salt pool, you need to test your salt level and compare it to what your salt system is saying because that will clue you in whether your salt system is getting dirty and not producing as well. To have it tested, if your salt system says that you have 3,000 parts per million and you take your water in, when they test it, it says that your salt level is 3,800 parts per million. Well, then you probably need to clean your salt system. Is it a different test? kit for salt systems as opposed to a chlorine pool is that a dumb question well just the salt the chlorine you test with they don't the, have just a special kit for they, ha- they have a special kit for testing salt level the sanitizer part of the salt system is chlorine so yes you need to test your chlorine on a regular basis you know at least once a week test your chlorine levels just so you Got can make, make sure that you're maintaining proper chlorine levels to keep uh-huh. your water safe and healthy the other thing Resolution number two. Well, it's manage your water balance. You know, uh, with these tests, you need to make sure that you're dosing properly. Get one of the apps. Get the Orenda app, Uh O-R-E-N-D-A. Get the Orenda app and just make sure that you're keeping your water somewhere between negative 0.2 and positive 0.3. Is that a website? It's an app. So you can just punch in all your parameters. As long as you know accurate readings on your pool, you're going to be able to keep your water balanced and keeping your water balanced is a huge part of increasing the life and uh, reducing problems Uh of your pool surfaces, of your Uh pool equipment and whatever products you're using, just make sure you dose accordingly. Never just add to add. Always test and add what the test calls for Mm -hmm. to get to the proper levels. The other thing is, which is kind of on the same lines, is manage your stabilizer levels better. So many people, they just tab, 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 tab. And those tabs are 50% stabilizer. We've talked about this on a few different shows. They're 50% stabilizer. So when you add these tabs, if you add a pound of tabs, you're adding a half pound of stabilizer. Mm -hmm. And the higher your stabilizer levels get, the more chlorine it takes to accomplish the exact same job. So we want to manage our stabilizer levels better. One of the best things we do is once the water temperature is below 65, 70 degrees, we stop using stabilized chlorine Mm. we use non-stabilized chlorine we just shock the water once a week and we'll do that all the way through winter that will allow our stabilizer levels to fall due to heavy rains and stuff like that and then in the spring when the temperatures start climbing again we'll stay off a stabilizer until we get back up into the high 60s and then we'll start using stabilized chlorine again because now chlorine is going to be becoming active so we want to have a residual of chlorine on Mm -hmm. a daily basis to help keep algae in check and keep the water safe i am just going to ask because you were saying when it goes up to this temperature that temperature because we were about to freeze ourselves to death last week and now today yeah Yeah, we had a big old freeze i could have had on flip-flops you just need to know what's happening i mean if you're going to be below freezing for a long period of time then you just need to make sure that everything is in proper working order Mm -hmm. and that you can run your pump 24 7 until we are above freezing once you're above freezing you just you just go back to business as usual and make sure you're familiar if you lose power and you cannot move water or your pump goes out or a leak happens or your water level gets too low something happens where you cannot circulate water through your system well you need to be familiar with your system so you can get out there in the cold pull all your drain plugs before the water starts freezing in the above ground plumbing and starts breaking equipment okay so that's all you need to do on that what's one of your other words um one of my other words is miracles what is a miracle resolution for your pool 
I know what you're going to say that people need to do in 2023. <laughs> well, that worked out pretty good. I know, right? Uh, all right. So, I don't uh, even know what you're my, my next say, thing right? on the poll is uh, use less chemicals, especially chlorine. And the and number one way to do that. <laughs> Look is, at me go. Is borates. <laughs> that, that, oh, wow. That's almost like we compared notes. But, and we actually seen, did not. I've uh, not seen one thing that you've written today. <laughs> <laughs> the whole purpose of taking better care of your pool mm-hmm. is to save yourself money. Sure. Is to sa- use less chemicals, to have less waste. Mm-hmm. Use less chemicals, especially chlorine. Borates is a good way to do that. But, th- I mean, there's other ways, too. One, one way that you can use less chemicals is just make sure that you have the proper amount of chemical in the water on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. So, like on chlorine, you want to dose your chlorine to make sure that you're maintaining 5% of your stabilizer level in chlorine with borate. So, if your stabilizer level is 50 parts per man, 5% of 50 is 2.5 parts per man of chlorine that you need to maintain on a constant basis, and that will help you keep algae at bay so you don't end up having to use a lot, a lot more shock or you don't have to use algicides. Because mm. we, we don't want to be in the habit of always using algicides. If you don't have borates in your pool, you need 7.5% of your stabilizer level. So if your stabilizer level is, is 50 parts per man, 7.5% of 50 is 3.75 parts per man of chlorine you want to keep on a constant basis when the water's above 70 degrees. And that will kill algae faster than algae can grow. It will keep your water safe, keep your water healthy. And you're not going to have to use all these algicides and crap that end up running your chemical bill way up. And if you have to shock a lot more because you're having algae issues, using extra shock costs you more money. And it also causes other problems. So, you know, we want to keep everything in a nice small window. And that's why we're talking about more frequency and keeping things in a better line. So you're not having to do the extra stuff that it does end up costing you money and cost you problems. Uh-huh. If you're not maintaining proper chlorine levels and you have an algae bloom, now you got to brush a lot more. You're going to have to clean the filter again. You're going to have to use shock. It's it, The water may get, you know, real cloudy and you end up not liking your pool because now it's just something in the backyard that you're putting money into and putting a lot of work into and it's not even usable. Right. And improve your circulation. We've talked about that several right, times. Right. Just make sure you're turning the entire pool. Listen to our podcast on circulation. Watch my videos on YouTube that we do on circulation and that's how to swim in pool. You can find it YouTube at Deep End Frank. Uh, but we got a lot of videos on circulation. Circulation is barely second to water chemistry and maintain in a pool properly and don't use weekly algicides if you are going to use a weekly algicide just go ahead and get the pool rx or get the the blu-ray xl is actually my preferred product it's a mineral system that puts copper and silver into the water but you remember if you're using these products you need to make sure that you're monitoring your total dissolved solids which goes back to that monthly really thorough testing that you need to have done because if your total dissolved solids get out of whack or your water balance gets way out of whack and you you're adding all this extra copper you could end up staining your pool these are great products but they can end up being problematic if you're not managing everything well Mm -hmm. or you know get a uv system or an ozone system or my preferred method would be an AOP system. These are secondary sanitizers. They they take some of the workload off of the chlorine. They do a lot of the oxidizing, the killing of algae that's in the water and the plumbing as it's going through the circulation system. The UV and the ozone or the AOP, they'll take care of a lot of that stuff for you so you can use a lot less chlorine. Then the other things are brushing. You need to make sure you brush your pool once a week. Brush up, brush up, brush up. Yes. Remove debris. Don't let crap just pile up in your skimmer baskets. Don't let your cleaner run around for a solid week full of leaves. Make sure you clean your pump pots. Don't let stuff just sit in the bottom. When organic material is breaking down in your pool, whether it's in the skimmer basket or whether it's in the pool itself or in the pump basket or in the cleaner basket, if that stuff breaking down is releasing nutrients into the water. Mm -hmm. And again, I've said it before, algae is not a plant but it's very plant-like. And it (laughs) takes nutrients out of the water. It feeds itself, and that helps it multiply more. Mm -hmm. And the the more food there is, the more it will multiply. That's why some people want to use phosphate removers and all that other stuff. We just go with borates because... 
borates helps keep it from multiplying. But you don't want all these nutrients and extra minerals and stuff in the water that algae needs to live because that's going to help the algae be healthier and it's going to take a lot more chlorine to kill it. Mm -hmm. So keep the debris out, brush your pool because you get algae on the walls, it gets in the little nooks and crannies and it will start growing and then start sending out spores. And once it gets established, it, the colony can grow very, very quickly. Mm. And then you can go from blue to green overnight. So when you brush, the little algae spores that are stuck to the walls uh -huh. and they're starting to start little colonies, when you brush it, you get those off the wall, out into the water where your chemistry is better and more consistent. And then you can end up killing the algae and you don't have to worry about it. What other words you got? These are the five that I'm praying over for my word of the year. Family is one of mine because it's very important to us. Um, and that's why we put a pool in our backyard. Yep. That's why for the grandbabies that ain't for yep. us. Yep. That's so people will and come the grand to dogs. our house. We've got a kitty pool and doggy pool that it's, it's a baby goes pool. into our big pool. Family is one of my big words. What you got? That would uh, relate to that. I don't, uh, know I don't, I don't have anything that relates to that. The next thing I got is keep logs. Keep logs of your water test. Keep logs of what you're adding. Because if you'll keep these logs, in, and if you take your water in somewhere once a month or every week and have them tested and they give you a printout, keep a folder with that in the folder. And as long as you have a history and you can look back, you'll start seeing trends in your pool. Th these logs are very important. I mean, every, right. serv every service company you ever talk to, uh, they're, they if they don't keep logs, then they probably shouldn't be in the service business. I mean, they can be electronic logs or they can be paper logs. You need to be able to look and see trends that are happening with the pool. Like if all of a sudden your stabilizer levels are dropping, 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 and you're seeing this uh, uh, slowly over months time mm -hmm. or calcium levels are dropping you got a leak and a lot of people don't realize you know i can that's test an indicator yes that's an indicator i think that's a show the indicator of leaks because some people we've actually we've channels. actually done that show but yeah that's something Have we probably we? need to yeah. touch up, touch on again i need to get a leak detector on here yeah yeah because that's detector. a that's a huge deal especially with the cost of water usage and we might have touched yeah. on it but well I'm and that's something we are about to get into is save water yeah if you have a leak address it yeah i mean you're just costing yourself a lot of money and mm -hmm. then the ground staying wet around your pool can cause your deck to lift it can cause yeah. your pool to lift it can it it's can cause movement in your home yeah so those are like the extreme problems that can happen with leaks but mm -hmm. if you got a leak even if it's a little equipment leak get it taken care of because a lot of times these little leaks if you'll take care of them quick they're fairly inexpensive to properly repair but if you let them go it can turn into much more extensive right. expensive really involved and then solution chemicals have gotten expensive <laughs> during the summer if you're spending a hundred dollars a month on pool chemicals and i think that's probably a, a moderate i was about to cost. say that's, yeah. that's kind of low <laughs> uh, but i mean if you got a leak and now you're using, having to use twice the chemicals to keep up because you're having to add so much tap water because tap water is not the water you want in your pool it needs to be balanced it needs to be sanitized mm -hmm. you, also now you're spending 200 300 400 a month on pool chemicals just trying to keep your pool right so if you're suspecting a leak find the the podcast we did on uh, yeah. on the bucket test, or I believe we got uh, we need bucket to do test videos one of those about but how to find f a, f find out yeah. how yeah you know, just find out how to do a proper bucket test. Mm -hmm. That will tell you if you have a leak or not. And then if you do have a leak, then okay, all right, now maybe call a leak detector, get mm -hmm. somebody out to actually find the leak and find out what it's going to take to fix it. Because just dealing with these leaks, oh yeah, I got a little bit of leak, I'll just live with it. That, that's not a good plan. And right. most of the time. Leaks are fairly simple fixes. Mm -hmm. And like they're skimmer throats where the plastic meets, the, if it's a gunite pool, where the plastic meets the uh, meets the tile inside of a skimmer. We do a lot of skimmer injections. And that's a fa fairly inexpensive repair, but it's, it's a permanent repair. Right. But if it's like broken pipe underground or something like that, you really need to get that taken care of because that's going to end up costing you a lot of money Down and road. possible yeah. really extensive repairs. Mm. So get those taken care of. Yeah. What, what's your next word? My last word, my number five word. I don't even know what you're talking about next, but I don't know why this is a word for me for 2023, but 
I'm considering, but unstoppable. You can do anything. You can, that might have been a leak. That might have been a leak. <laughs> it's unstoppable. The leak, I don't know, but unstoppable. The, the only thing I got left is uh, just be more efficient. Op- operate your pool more efficiently. Mm-hmm. If, if you have a variable speed pump, running it at high speed for eight hours a day is not, not doing anything for right. you. If you do have a variable speed pump, or you, if you have a single speed pump that's about to go out, yeah. go ahead and get the variable speed pump. They're going to pay for themselves. Mm -hmm. Electricity just keeps getting higher and higher and Mm -hmm. higher. So the variable speed pump is going to pay for itself quicker and quicker and quicker. Operate your pumps more efficiently. Of course, you always need to be moving your water pretty well when the sun's on the on the water when it's warm out and the water temperatures are above 70 degrees. Uh-huh. You, you, the water needs to be moving. You need to be exchanging water everywhere. That doesn't mean you have to be move, running it at high speed during those times. You can run it at a medium speed and run your pump 24 hours a day. You can run it very low speed all night, run it a high speed, maybe for an hour or two in the morning, maybe for an hour or two in the afternoon, and then a medium speed in between while, when the sun's on the pool. And you can do this with the energy efficient variable speed pump you can do that for probably a third of the electricity it takes to run a high speed pump for eight to ten hours wow so you can run your pump at these lower speeds it's costing you a lot less per gallon to move that gallon of water Mm -hmm. you're getting better circulation you're getting better filtration your chemistry is staying more consistent throughout the pool you can actually turn the pool over more times per day by doing this for a lot less money the definition of turnover is like one turnover is the volume of water that's in that pool goes through that filter once per day Mm-hmm. Minimum you probably ever want to do is two times per day. Commercial pools got to turn over four times per day, but anywhere between two and three times per day around here in our part of North Texas is typically sufficient. Ours almost does four times a day. Every pool is going to be a little bit different, different size pools, different size pumps, but mm-hmm. just moving that water constantly all day long at these lower speeds because at the lower speeds, they're extremely efficient. They're just a little bit more efficient at the higher speeds, but at okay. the lower speeds, they're extremely efficient. If you cut your speed speed in half on a variable speed pump, you're cutting the water flow in half, but you're cutting the electricity usage by about six to eight times. Oh, okay. So that's where I get where it costs a lot less to move each gallon of water. And, that makes sense. And, yeah, yeah. and if you're running it 24 hours a day, you're moving, you know, you can turn the pull over more, which is better for your pull. Something, you know, we just had this big freeze and right, I got right. so many people coming into the retail store telling me, wow, our water's so clear. You know why it's so clear? They've been running their pump 24-7 for like four days straight because (laughs) it was freezing outside. Right. So they actually properly, finally, properly filtered their pool. So now their water looks clear and they're like, wow, that's amazing. This cold, this cold weather really clears up your water. No, no, it ain't the cold (laughs) weather. It's you're actually filtering as much as you should be filtering. Which is what you should be doing. You should all be doing day, that all day. the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because taking those little particles out of the water makes mm-hmm. your makes your chlorine have to work less. It helps keep your chemistry more balanced and everything more stable. So more filtration is better. It will always be better. Less filtration will never be the better option. So just keep that in mind. Run your water features less. If you got these big waterfalls and all this stuff, so many mm-hmm. people, they'll run their waterfall eight hours a day, and they're not even going out in the backyard that day. You know. Well, it's winter. Why well, no, I'm talking run? summer. Oh, okay. It's, okay. Uh, ours was running the other day, and I was like... Well, we, ours had to run to keep it from freezing. Yeah, well, it yeah, is in freeze yeah, yeah. protection. But in the summer, I mean, you know, maybe get an automation system so you can just turn the waterfalls on when um, when you can enjoy them. Yes, they need to run probably 10 to 15 minutes a day. So if you have them on an old mechanical time clock, maybe have them run 10, 15 minutes a day, every day. But if you go out there, you can... When you're coming home from work and you know you're going to go out yeah, and have if you're gonna go, barbecue you know, and go swimming, yeah, turn you, those babies on. Or in the morning, you're going to go out and drink your coffee, turn it on. Yeah, yeah. And so while you're out there, you're enjoying it. Sure. But if you're not out there, you're not wasting electricity. Running water, waterfalls yeah. causes more evaporation. So you're wasting water. You got to add more tap water. So that adding tap water means you got to add more chemistry because now you got to balance that tap water. Mm-hmm. So if you're not getting any use out of the water feature, don't run it. 
run it once a day Mm -hmm. just to keep the lines clear and keep that water exchanged out and everything. But don't just run it for six hours hours a day just to run it. If you're not enjoying it, it serves zero purpose on this planet. Right. All right. But if, if you're out there, absolutely turn it on. I mean, you paid good money for that. Use it. Sure. But using it less will, will make your pool better. Trust me. All right. uh, robotic cleaners. Get a robotic cleaner. A robotic cleaner. I've seen reports where it says that if you have a pressure side cleaner like a Player's 280 or you have, God help you, if you if you <laughs> ended up getting a Pinter racer or or Pinter Letro. Letro is actually pretty your decent Your New Year's cleaner. resolution is but, to get a robotic but, cleaner. But if They're the bomb. Yes. <laughs> if you have... Uh, a booster pump that runs a cleaner. I've seen reports that say you save two hundred to three hundred dollars a year mm-hmm. by using a robotic cleaner as opposed wow. to one of those pressure side cleaners that have That's a booster awesome. pump. Yeah. And and here's something else: if if you are going to get a robotic cleaner and you're going to keep your pressure side cleaner, your your Polaris two hundred and eighty or three hundred and eighty or your Electro Legend, mm-hmm. don't run it six hours a day. That's unnecessary. How many hours should they run it? Whatever it takes. If your cleaner can clean your pool in one hour every day, Mm -hmm. then only run it one hour. So many people, these cleaners, they wear themselves out. The more they run, the more they wear out. Everybody you you ever talk to that has a pressure side cleaner will tell you that they spend $100 to $200 a year on bags, on tires, on bearings, Mm -hmm. on hose pieces. Well, it's probably mostly due to people running those pressure side cleaners way more than what they need to run. What they should. Yeah. If it's going yeah. to cover your pool well in an hour, hour and a half, then that's all you need to run it. You don't need to run it four to six hours a day. And if the leaves are falling and you're saying, oh, we got a lot of leaves falling, I need to run it longer. Well, you know what? If you ain't going to go out there and empty the bag, why run it longer? It can't get anything else right. in that bag. If you got a lot of leaves in the pool, it's going to fill up. In probably 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, you're just moving stuff around. Right. So, you know, if leaves are falling, why run it four hours a day if you're not going to be there constantly emptying the bag? Right. Because it's, right. it's not going to pick up it's any not, more than yeah, it can. Yeah. Just be mindful of the energy that you're that you're using to run your equipment. You know, there's a lot of ways you can be more efficient. Mm-hmm. You can save money. Your pool can look better. And, and you can you have dope. less problems. Yes, you don't want to be that person that hates their pool. That I mean, that's, that's the resolution to to save money, have it look great, less problems, less problems. Absolutely. That is and, the resolution. I mean, this, a swimming pool nowadays, swimming pool is running probably seventy to $80,000. But you don't want to and be that, a, that's probably not the average. That's probably the low end. You don't want it to be a pain in your padonkadonk. Well, you want it in 2023 to yes. be a when, fabulous investment. When, when, you, when you think about your pool, you want to smile on your face. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Right, and that is it. And we covered all your you words. Done. Happy New Year. <laughs> 2023 man here we, we go here we go here we go let's uh let's see what happens this yeah. year yeah uh, we'll see you wish y'all the best y'all have a happy new have year a safe night we'll see y'all next week or talk why to you anyway you why should you skim why you hire a pro and stay off that limb so take a dive into the deep end